Hi, welcome to part 21C on the Lackawanna Cutoff. We're, we're going over the 21 missing miles on the cutoff. Today we'll be going from Johnsonburg, New Jersey to Blairstown, New Jersey. Hi, I'm Chuck Walsh and I'm president of the North Jersey Rail Commuter Association. And this is the third part of six part mini series on the 21 miles of the Lackawanna Cutoff between Andover and the Delaware Water Gap, Andover, New Jersey, Delaware Water Gap, actually in the state of Pennsylvania. Today's ride will be a little bit different than the previous rides. If in A and B, B we found out that there's actually a, a, a westbound upgrade or hill, a little bit of a hill coming up here to Johnsonburg. From here on in, though, it is basically all downhill. Um, it, for the first mile or so, it'll be maybe about a tenth of a percent of a, a grade, and then after that, it becomes much steeper, about a half a percent, all the way to Blairstown. Now, throughout the, the videos and even outside of this particular mini series, it may seem like there's a little bit of a, an obsession with the talking about the gradient and how steep the grade is and so forth. You have to remember, though, that the, the cutoff actually loses 600 feet in elevation from Port Morris to the Delaware Water Gap. Now, the, the, the challenge for the builders of the cutoff was to distribute that change in elevation as evenly as possible. Ideally, they would have done so evenly throughout the whole route, which would have been almost 30 miles, and if they had done it that way, with a, that would have averaged out to about 20 feet per mile, that would have been lost. Unfortunately, because of the, the cost of moving material around, that wasn't practical. So as a result, you have places where it's flat, uh, where the grade isn't that much, or even in this case, where there's actually a, a westbound upgrade, even though you're trying to lose that 600 feet somehow. Um, but this is the section we will start to lose it more quickly. And uh, that will help me because, as I've said in the past, the, the gravity will be on my side. So what are we going to see in this section? Well, this section has quite a few things that, uh, that, to, that are points of interest. Uh, there will be a total of five overhead bridges we will go under. Uh, two of them are at Blairstown, so technically they're one, but it's one road, but two bridges there. There'll be a private road and a couple of other roads, like Landing Road and Silver Lake Road. Silver Lake Road has been rebuilt, that bridge, from basically the, the top from the deck on up. The rest of the bridge, I believe, has not been. That's where the, the Lackawanna sign with Jack Belay was, uh, where he had that... Um, uh, displayed on the side of the hill there, which we did the archaeological expedition. Didn't find it, unfortunately. Uh, that's also where Johnsonburg siding is. We'll see how that affects the ballast. That seems to be an issue as we go along, the distribution of ballast. But that was an, an old siding, so maybe maybe not as much of an issue. Uh, right here, or just a little bit west of here, you can't really see with the trees, but is Armstrong Cut. I, we pointed that out in coming up the hill towards... Johnsonburg in, in the 21B video, you can see the big hill coming up. Well, that's the big hill we're going to go through. That a landslide in 1941 that closed the, the cutoff for about a month, and they angled back the north side of the, the cutoff of the, of the cut, Armstrong cut, and we probably should be able to see that on the right-hand side. It should be noticeable. We'll also pass the farm of Charlie Rydell. We're in the Johnsonburg episode. I, I talked about how he had told the story how a, a train coming west on the cutoff was going down the grade and saw the what was a tool shed that was on fire next to the family house, the farmhouse. This is 1924, 1925 in there. They stopped the train, woke the family, saved the, um, well, not only they, they, as much as they could of the tool ship, but certainly they, they saved the, the farmhouse, which was right next to it, and they uh, maybe even saved the family. 
And what else is there? Well, we will also go into Blairstown, which is where there's a station which has been over the years always there's always something there it's it's uh, unlike Greendale well unlike here where there's nothing but Greendale for example there's a building but it's not it doesn't have any use at this point uh, John uh, Blairstown even when there was an operating railroad back in the year like one of days there was uh, still um, there was a use for that it was a radio station at that point um, it's uh, since then it's had several other uses but at least it's being used that's that's a good thing so um, it, it's about four miles between here and there, 4.1 miles uh, between here and Blairstown. Uh, we don't know what we'll encounter along the way. Uh, ballast has been an issue. Uh, water has not been that wet over the last week or so, fortunately. So maybe we won't be having to deal with the the ponding that we saw in the, the B section, which was pretty bad in some spots. And then uh, we'll, we'll see what else, maybe the, the trees and all that stuff. Um, but hopefully, overall, it will be, we can only hope, cross your fingers, that it will be relatively uncomplicated. And uh, once again, since it's downhill, that may help a bit. Or, well, it should not hinder, at least in that respect. But um, So as a result, it looks like it's time for me to Head on out, head for Blairstown. My videographer will meet me there and uh, we will do a close out at that point. But in the meantime, let's go and enjoy the ride. See, see you soon.
road. Oh boy. Should have brought my boat with me. Alright, well, I don't know, cross our fingers again, let's see what happens here.
That wasn't too bad of a run, everything considered. Once we got going, let's see. We have these from time to time. Usually something has fallen and everybody does this run around here to get away from whatever has fallen. Which is fine if you're on an ATV, but it stinks if you're on a bicycle. Even walking it doubles the distance, but especially on a bicycle. Well, I guess it'd be quick, and then we're going to have a, looks like a little bridge come up again. That's not a low bridge, it's another detour. Landing Road. It really does look like Landing Road now that I get a closer look at it. This one looks like it's in need of repair like Silver Lake was, which we'll see in a little bit. in here uninterrupted only hope Brakes are complaining. Check my GoPro. We're good. I hit something up there. I'll make sure that that's still okay. Oh, wildlife. fingerprints off.
these are tough. If sideways motion, if you have ballast, which is uneven, you got me that's uneven. <laughs> holds here. Uh, no. Nope. If Mother Nature would stop dropping trees, it wouldn't be so much of an issue. Looks like we have something else coming up here. I think I know what it is, but we'll see here. deep this ballast is. Right here it's about, wow, at least foot and a half, almost two feet. Well, I'm still saving time if I, even for short jaunts here, get on the bicycle. Pushing my luck enough. The Charlie Rydell farm. I gotta stop here because just take a quick look. Just poke my head out. farmhouse on the right, barns on the left. The tool shed would have been just to the left of the 
the uh, farmhouse. The train stopped here and the engineer and the fireman ran to wake up the family. I mean, they saw the, the flames. The, it's a downhill grade here. Interestingly enough, it's not really discernible, but um, it should be roughly about a little over half a percent here. Maybe as you look out down the, the right of way, you can see a little bit, but uh, that would have been a pretty good feat. Stop a freight train that was probably moving pretty good. And uh, maybe saving the family. Certainly saving the house. If you hear me sniffling, it's because it's 53 degrees. my longest run so far. I'm interrupted. see every day on the cutoff an orange cone quote-unquote refurbished bridge let's put it that way Close enough to the end of this this quagmire okay jump on here and let's see if we can make up a little bit of time can always hope
those holes are a couple of feet deep with the wide angle lens of the GoPro they may not look that way there's another about a foot deep or more some run and a half I've got a like two, two and a half feet. They're heavy with ballast. They're virtually impossible to cross through on a bicycle. You have to walk it. This one goes way off, halfway to Belvedere. borderline you get stuck in the mud and then tumble over it's not worth it wouldn't get really injured but it's just a <laughs> if I can avoid a spill I'll do it when you're trying to compensate. You're going left, right, left, right.
this is another borderline situation. Uh. Hope there's enough ballast because <laughs> the mud is worse than the ballast when, it, when it's really bad. Yep, just traction is an issue. bugs off of me. This is annoying. <laughs> means that we're getting close to Blairstown. worth it looks like there's drying us up ahead I think we're going out into a fill which is always a well almost always better than being in a cut there have been a couple of notable exceptions to that but
problems with this speed, you can't outrun the bugs. Uh, you have to be doing at least seven or eight miles an hour. Even that isn't a guarantee. fill here. Coming up on the 521 bridges. Yeah, this is gonna, there's too much rock here. first bridge on the east side is uh, a newer bridge built about 2005-2006 and it's used for the northbound lanes of County Road 521, Warren County Road 521. The second bridge is the original 1911 bridge. And uh, that one was rehabilitated. And that carries the northbound traffic. So, nice compromise where they kept the old bridge and just built another one and uh, straightened out the hairpin turn. It's just beyond this, off to the right here. less than a quarter mile between the, the bridges and the station. Yeah, of course. Okay, well, it looks like we're gonna have to walk a good part of it to the station. The station should almost be visible. Take away those trees and you can see it. Uh, left or right? Up for left again. It's kind of tough to. Yeah. See the water goes up to the edge of the hill there. Here's would be the better choice. The rest of should be waiting for me. And we'll wrap this episode up. Will I get to ride any? Yeah, looks like I get a short joint here. I get back on. Not much, but a little bit here.
Okay, made it to, to Blairstown. Uh, I even got a spike out of it. Found this along the way. Um, uh, lots of water. Um, I'm getting used to the ballast, although there was still an issue with the ballast. Uh, number of down trees, that kind of thing, causing the detours. Uh, we got to see the the different overpasses. The couldn't really tell about the Johnsonburg siding so much. Stop the Charlie Rydell's, uh, his old farm, and um, kind of sort of got an idea about Armstrong Cut. It's a little bit difficult with all the trees, even at this time of year. It's not full bloom, but still. So, um, so here we are at, at Blairstown. Our next segment will start here and go all the way to the Pollens Kill Viaduct. Uh, that will be the longest of all the single jaunts. That will be Part D. And uh, that's about six miles. So that's, um, that's uh, a couple more miles longer than this one. Once again, not sure what we'll encounter. It's not so much the mileage, but it's the conditions. Uh, if everything were like this, which is great, uh, it wouldn't be so bad at all, but you know, given the state of the right-of-way, it can, it can vary from not so bad to just basically awful, almost impassable. So that's that. So I hope you look forward to our next video, which will be our fourth in the sixth six, uh, part mini-series, part D, on the Lackawanna Cutoff.